The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. The presenters or the speakers like apologized recently for not able to be uh, presenting today, but uh, we have uh, Frank. Uh, he has a very interesting presentation for us. And I'd like him the re recycling, concrete, glass, paper, rubber, and recycling everything. <laughs> so uh, Frank. Kozaleski. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I wasn't planning to do this, but I, I didn't know about this uh, these sessions until I got to the convention. So this morning we had a uh, discussion about putting glass in concrete, and uh, so I mentioned to them that I could come to the 555 meeting at 5 o'clock, and they says, no, why don't you come at 2.30? We got a vacancy. I was a ready mix producer up until six years ago. I sold out and uh, out of Gallup, New Mexico, which is on I-40 at the Arizona-New Mexico border, and a uh, town of about 20,000. Uh, we were the ready mix producer. My brother at one point was the city attorney, and so we got along just fine. And the, the city... Uh, got into the big recycling thing, and so we had to take recycled concrete, and uh, this is the pile of it, and we, we took it from everybody. It was not uh, from a highway job. It was, you know, mom and dad was tearing out a sidewalk, or we're going to tear up a sidewalk to add something to it, so we would collect our uh, uh, concrete there. Now, one thing over here in the lower end is the... Uh, is rebar. We noticed that that was one of the main problems we had with uh, recycling is all this rebar that would come uh, come with the concrete. It, I understand now they can uh, cut it up and bale it and, and send it off to be uh, recycled, but this was one of the main problems we had. But the uh, pile in the back was a concrete pile, and then we had asphalt. We would pick the asphalt up, and we would crush it. So you had this collection of material, and you didn't know what all was in there. You couldn't inspect it, and basically, uh, we were taking it for for free. This was uh, about ten years ago uh, when we got into this. We would take it for free and and then just crush it. And as you can see, where all the rebar is over here on the left, that's why we say don't put in uh, wire mesh and concrete because it helps us uh, recycle it because it's easier to take it out. And then on the right there is a uh, processor that we had that would uh, break up the, the concrete uh, so that we could crush it further. These are a couple of crushers. Uh, on the left is a jaw, and on the right was our, uh, our crusher that uh, was a horizontal impact. And uh, right over here was a magnet where we would pull the large pieces of uh, rebar out of the concrete once it went through the crusher. So, you know, you take this material and screen it. We used it all the time for base cores. I never was in the business. If I'd still been in the business, we'd probably be using it in concrete uh, at about 50% on the coarse aggregate, just for your information on what I've, I know about this. So then we went to a second ag uh, magnet. I was sleeping one night, and I thought, you know what? I didn't get all the... The, the metal out of it. And it was one of those sleeping, you know, you're sleeping and you're dreaming. And so anyway, I went and got me this magnet um, and put it in, and we picked up all these little pieces of uh, wire mesh that are cut up. Because if not, you're going to buy a whole bunch of tires when you put it down for base course. 
So if you're going to get in the recycling business or anything like this and taking it from Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Mary, and Joe, uh, you're going to end up with all this, all these things. There's nails in there. There's uh, spark plugs, uh, little pieces of rebar, all kind of things if you're going to do recycling with uh, of concrete. And we did, we put all the uh, base course that we could under asphalt because of the uh, the secondary uh, wires and nails that are in the uh, in the base course. But now they put on a second magnet to try to eliminate this problem. So then my brother, being the city attorney, says, "Well, we're going to have a cleanup program. We're going to collect glass." Okay, uh, he says, "I think you ought to for." You know, a small town, you need to accept this. I said, okay, I didn't want to, but we did. Being an attorney and he's your younger brother, you better behave yourself. <laughs> and uh, so he, we collected glass from the bars. They had special provisions to put the glass in uh, certain containers, and they hauled it to us and dumped it, and then we hauled it to our crusher. The, the guys that were kind of going through, we had a bunch of trash, and they came in bags and stuff like that. And they actually got about $35. Uh, so the, the girls that were getting the tips at the bar, they would just take all the, the bottles off and pitch them into the trash can. And so when the guys got it to recycle, they made about 35 bucks in tips that wasn't picked up at the bar that night. <laughs> so then we fed the, um, just fed it into our crusher. This was a horizontal impact. And on the, uh, on the left there is the uh, magnet that would take out, uh, any metal that was in uh, this large horizontal impact crusher uh, that we had come up with for for crushing our our concrete aggregate, and then uh, for uh, then we went to using it for uh, recycled concrete, and then for this glass, and the magnet removed all the um, beer caps the for the bottles, the cans. Uh, they were just throwing them off like crazy. So then we ended up about different sizes. There was uh, some of the plastic was in there. So we ended up with all this glass, and um, we were just playing with it. We didn't know what we were going to do with it. I own the company. I own the crusher, and it was like, you know, you've, you've got to try something different to make it interesting. And this is what it looked like. It was all colors. Uh, we met with people that were uh, into the glass recycling and they told us one of the main thing is all the um, syrup, the sugar, and the wine, and the beer, that this could cause problems with the concrete, and it may not set. I said, well, we're going to have to try it and see. And so our research is we'll do it in truckload lots. So back in 2005, we took our mix design, which had 500 pounds of cement, 120 pounds of ash, and all of our mix designs were four aggregates. Uh, we did it along a 45 power curve line. We graded all of our aggregates. And that was like our control mix design. If we did anything different, this was our, our main mix design. So we just took this mix design with the fly ash and uh, took out uh, 300 pounds of uh, fine aggregate and uh, added 300 pounds of uh, crushed glass. And uh, we put it in, and the first thing I, this is what it looks like now after a number of years. Um, 2012 is when I took these pictures. But the concrete did not fall apart. That was one of the first things you want to know if it's sitting out there in the field. It was, we're at 6,500 feet. We go through free cycles, free thaw cycles all the time. The when I left the other day from Gallup, I drove down here. It was 27 degrees, and then the high in the afternoon is going to be 67. So there's basically a 40-degree temperature differential every day. So I put it all on the railroad tracks. We had to change out some track, and our trucks would drive in. And I thought, well, I'll put it up there because if, if it doesn't work and falls apart, nobody's going to ever see it. And uh, the guys that bring in the rail cars for unloading cement or something is where we would see uh, see some of this. But basically, we've put it in, and it's not falling apart. It had air entrainment. It was a standard mix design with, uh, with glass, uh, just the crushed glass. I think I ran a gradation, but I don't 
don't know what it is. And then I put some in my driveway. It's over, my driveway is that on the right-hand side. Um, I put glass in it, and it's still there. And the sidewalk, the city comes by and sprays salt on it, and it's basically uh, salt on the sidewalks uh, eating up the surface. I didn't sell it to anybody because I didn't want anybody to have their shoes on and walk on it because uh, you could possibly cut yourself on the glass. So then uh, we had rubber. Um, we had a lot of ready-mix trucks, and we had to get the, uh, uh, get the tires uh, recapped. And this is some of the rubber that comes off from the uh, rubber people. And we decided, well, let's try that. In the concrete, we'll have black fibers instead of white fibers with fiber mesh. So we put it in the concrete, um, added, uh, I think it was about 100 pounds of, of rubber. We put it in, and uh, these sidewalks here are about uh, 10 or 15 years old. You can see the rubber on it. The uh, only place it does not work is on the right um, we put diesel fuel on it because we had some by a diesel fuel tank, and it looked like the diesel fuel was eating up the uh, the rubber, and it was growing. So I took a sample of it there on the right and started putting diesel fuel on it behind the lab, and it disintegrated. The rubber was being eaten up by the by the diesel fuel, and so then we have some on sidewalks and things in Gallup. Uh, we talk to the individual and say, you know, we want to try something. You interested? Oh, yeah, let's try it. This guy wanted to build a whole house with us. I said, oh, no, no, we're going to put it on, we're going to put it on sidewalks and driveways. I said, that's about it. I don't want to put it in the foundations. I don't want your house to fall apart. So anyway, shredded rubber works. And then these guys came to me about 10 or 15 years ago. They said, I understand you do a lot of recycling and playing. I said, oh, yeah. And this is, uh, be honest with you, it, it was couple of hippies come by to see me and they said uh, they said hey man we got some r paper we want to make paper creep I said, oh lord here we go again so anyway uh just east of gallup there's a uh, uh paper mill that takes recycled paper or cardboard and makes paper recycled paper and the raw waste is over on the right they haul it to a landfill and bury it so they said, well, let's see if we can't use it. I said, well, okay, so basically we used uh, cement, uh, or uh, there's some cement here, natural sand. This was some crushed sand, and this was the paper. We put it together, and I put it in a little mixer truck or our little uh, lab mixer to make sure it would work uh, because I didn't want to put this stuff in a $100,000 truck and lose the drum and everything else, I would, you know, it's not worth that. So anyway, we made, I played with some in the lab one Saturday and uh, ran a slump test and everything, and it worked. Then I made some cylinders. And the cylinders shrank about an hour, uh, about an inch. They're four by eight cylinders. And uh, I didn't know, these are my flowable fill cylinders, as I call them. I take the four by eights and split them and put a couple of uh, clamps, uh, four-inch clamps, so I can take them apart so I don't break the cylinder molds. But anyway, with this paper creek, uh, it was shrinking, and we said, yeah, I guess we can make it. And then when I went to test it, it was very interesting, put it in the cylinders and started breaking it, and if the water was in it, the water was just coming out the pores like it was sweaty, and, but they never broke. Um, you know, I have some cylinders right now that are probably about six years old. They're probably good and dried out. But, uh, you know, they, the, the cylinders never really failed. They just kept carrying weight and uh, squeezing the water out. So then we made these bricks, um, and these people were making houses up on the Navajo Indian Reservation. And uh, we would deliver the concrete out there, and they would uh, just dump it out there, or the paper creed, I should say. We delivered it out there. And then they would cut it up and uh, make these blocks. Um, so it was it was very interesting project. And then we helped them make some blocks, and then we delivered them to the to the job site because I was one of those engineers that you know let's try it, let's see if it'll work. You know we can do research on it, but let's do it in 
and big, you know, try it if you can. You know, if it's not going to cost you a lot of money, just go ahead and try it. You know, you can, you know, you blow an engine on something, it's $10,000, so take $10,000 and play with it. Uh, so that's how we, we did it. And then uh, th this is real. I think if you go to uh, go to Google and go to Papercrete, you can find more information on this. And then up in Farmington, New Mexico, I was up there, these guys had been picking up the paper from uh, the old the newspapers and magazines. And it's like you had to have a 19 rear end of a 1965 Chevrolet or something, and you would pull it and it would mix it, and um, then it would dump it out so that they could uh, make these bricks. So, uh, I mean, it was like 95, 96 degrees in the summertime one day, and inside of these buildings, they were really nice and cool. But it was uh, energy efficient using recycled paper, and then they had some models here here on some uh, work they were going to do, but uh, I never was able to continue on. We were looking at uh, get, getting into this in a big time way because of all the waste materials and we were going to make bricks and ship them out on the railroad, on the Santa Fe Railroad. So, you know, you stay with what, you, what you're in this thing for. So anyway, this is what we've done with some recycling. Uh, this is not on a university basis or on a lab basis. This is... Uh, truck load lots, and so I just wanted to share it with you because there's a lot of young folks in here looking at this recycling. I think it's great. Um, you know, we've done a lot of uh, flowable fill with crusher finds and things like this, and uh, there's another one. We were at a power plant where we um, took some sludge and mixed it with some base course and some fly ash and cement, and we put it on a, on a liner so that the elk wouldn't punch holes in the uh, in the rubber liner at the power plant. So, folks, that's all I have for the recycling of what I've done at Gallup Sand and Gravel and just trying to share it with these people. So, thank you. Thank you.